my name is Eric Tyree. I'm the head of product here at Weijo. My background is in data science, AI, and related product management. And I've been doing this for everyone from small startups to large corporations. If I were to sort of summarize my career, um, it's, it's data-driven transformation. Obviously, there's a uh, virtuous circle between demand for EVs and demand for charge points. So as demand for, for EVs increases in a particular geography, the demand for charge points in that geography increases. But also, you get the opposite effect. If you increase the number of charge points in a vicinity, then the demand for EV increases because people realize that it's easy for them to charge their cars. And this demand is coming from both the public sector and the private sector. So from the public sector, it's governments that are interested in infrastructure, design, infrastructure planning, transportation, so on and so forth. And they're looking at it from a government's point of view, hey, we gotta make sure that there's enough you know, charge points available for the EV demand in my jurisdiction. But we're also seeing this uh, significantly from the private sector. And a great example of this is retailers who are very, very interested in using the availability of charge points on their properties. Not only encourage people to come shop in their stores while they're, they're charging their cars, but to use charge points as a revenue generator in and of themselves. As a product person at Wejo, this is having a very significant impact to me because we uh, see this as a huge opportunity for our connected vehicle data um, to help people make these decisions, to help people do this planning to the point where we've created a whole product line around this. The biggest trend that we're seeing at the moment is, of course, the growing number of EV registrations. This is currently growing at about 20% a year, which is pretty good growth. Think about what it took for the internal combustion engine to replace horses. That entire process at the beginning of the 20th century took about 10 to 15 years. And we're, you know, probably about a third of the way uh, through that process. And this process is now going to accelerate uh, dramatically. Because now what you're seeing is a growing trend of EV models themselves. And this has grown something like 25% in the last few years. It's going to grow even more. If you look at the car manufacturers, the vast majority, the vast majority are now saying they will cease to produce internal combustion engines by 2030 or by 2040. And if you think about it, 2030 is is only about seven years away. So this is happening very, very quickly. And even those manufacturers who are saying they will continue to produce internal combustion engines, they are predicting that by 2030 or 2040, a very significant portion of their sales will be EV as well. That's a pretty big, good, big trend. And then finally, um, you've got the infrastructure pressures around this. Um, some estimates are saying that you know, for every new EV put on the road, it's going to add somewhere between $2,000 and $6,000 worth of infrastructure spend needed to support that. That might sound a lot, but if you look at the infrastructure that had to change from going from horses to the internal combustion engine in just 10 to 15 years, that is much more dramatic than what we're trying to do today. And what we're doing today is with modern connectivity and infrastructure. From our point of view, you know, these trends are just fueling the amount of data that, that's available to us that we can use with our customers to help them do their planning around the EV revolution. The enablers of these trends is, is really threefold, pr primarily. I mean, there's lots going on here, but there's kind of three big ones. The obvious one is technology, and particularly around batteries. Battery capability is growing. The speed with which you can charge a battery in a car is increasing. What this means is from the consumer's point of view, people feel more assured buying EVs. They can get you know the mileage you need out of it. They, they can get the speed of charging out of it. You know, issues around range anxiety are becoming less and less prominent. Perhaps equally, if not more important, in some respects, is economies of scale. What many people don't realize is that the number of parts in an electronic vehicle is about one quarter of that in an internal combustion engine. So what this means is that the cost of production, once things really scale up, will be dramatically lower than they are for internal combustion engines. So what this means is that when we start seeing true economies of scale in the production of EVs, they will be cheaper than internal combustion engine cars because they're simpler. Final trend is demand. I mean, people want EVs and uh, that trend looks definitely set to continue. In terms of barriers, well, obviously infrastructure investment has got to keep pace with demand. More charge points are gonna be needed and uh, more infrastructure uh, enhancements are gonna be needed. I think amongst consumers of automobiles, I mean, obviously range anxiety is still there. It's still something uh, that people worry about. But again, I think as the infrastructure catches up and more and more charge points are available, that's gonna drop away uh, quite dramatically. And then finally, it's cost. I mean, EVs are still more expensive than uh, internal combustion engine cars, but as I said before, once economies of scale kick in, once 
manufacturers stop producing internal combustion uh, engine cars and are focused on uh, EV cars, I mean, the price is going to really drop. So that, that sort of barrier to adoption at the moment um, is going to go away. Well, the role of connected vehicle data is right in the middle of all this. And it's really around um, predicting and working with the need and demand around charge point access. So what a lot of people are doing, both in the public and private sector, is they're looking at not only where geographically EV demand is growing, but trying to also predict it. And what you're looking at is not just where people are moving towards EV cars on the current trend, but what's happening with their journeys. So how are they driving with these cars? Because once you understand the growing trend by geography and you understand the growing trend by the routes that people are taking, it's fairly straightforward then to work out where the optimal charge points need to be. But also say you're, you're a retailer, you know, using that data to understand what's the economic potential of offering charge points um, on my parking lots is also something that you can start working up pretty straightforward. So in terms of its contribution to this to this EV revolution, it's it's, it's absolutely the oil um, that's that's allowing these uh, gears to move more, more quickly and both in the private sector and in the public sector. What I'm finding surprising is the, the sheer speed um, with which uh, this is occurring. Like I said before, it was about a 15 year process with the internal combustion engine. I think we're gonna hit that, if not move a bit quicker with that. Again, you know, auto manufacturers, most of them are already announcing that they will cease production of internal combustion engine cars in the next, what, 15, 20 years. You've seen increased regulatory actions. So California and the EU are also banning the sales of new internal combustion engine cars um, over the next uh, 10 to 20 years. Uh, I think Oregon the latest uh, state in the U.S. has started doing this. And if you really want to see the future, go take a look at Japan. Because not only are they planning on an EV future, they're also doing the planning and the infrastructure work looking at the AV future. In other words, the autonomous vehicle future and are starting to bring that forward and make that happen. It's just the breathtaking speed of these trends that's really catching my eye. There's really two things. One is that this data is available um, and it's available in depth. And you can use this data now to be making fact and database decisions around infrastructure and charge points and how these uh, trends in, in uh, EV vehicle uptake and journeys uh, enable you to make the right decisions in terms of where to place charge points, both in the public sector and the private sector. What's more is that this data does have a lot of depth to it and it's available real time. So not only can you use it to make your decisions, but you can monitor your decisions with this data, continue and make sure that the decisions you're making are in line with your predictions and uh, are consistent with uh, the sheer speed with which this EV revolution is rolling out.